Welcome, welcome, welcome to Learning Reaper. I'm your host, x.e.l.o. And today, I'm actually going to go over some of the basic setups in Reaper that I think you guys should actually do. Ah, so you just downloaded Reaper. You're thinking, oh man, I'm going to make some bangers with this. And then you realize that you don't really understand what's going on or how everything should be laid out or why when I use my mouse tool to scroll up and down, it's zooming in and out. So I want to actually go through some steps and show you guys how I personally set up my Reaper uh, to kind of get it into a really nice workflow for me. So let's get into it and I'll show you how to even save and customize your own. And I'll probably even throw in my own customization at the end of this video. So let's get into it. All right, so here we are in Reaper. This is when you just get Reaper. This is on a thumb drive. So yes, you can actually have Reaper on just a basic thumb drive and put it into your computer, load it up, and it'll run the program. That's how small and efficient this DAW is. Uh, but it's not much to look at. As you see here, I mean, there's, there's, there's just not much to look at. You have your the Ranger screen here, you have your transport window down here. Well, I don't usually like mine down, being down here. I like mine to be at the top of the screen. Uh, and you can move it anywhere you want. You can just right click on here and go to dock wherever you want to, above the ruler, at the bottom. So it'll go to the bottom of the screen. So wherever you want to put it, you can actually put it. It makes it really easy to do that inside of Reaper. So first thing you do is when you come in here and you're like, all right, so um, let's add some tracks. So I'm just going to double click and it's going to add a track, right? So let's say I'm just adding tracks, right? And you want to pull this up. So let's pull this up some so we can have a little bit bigger mixer. All right. So now you have your tracks up here and you're like, all right, so let me zoom down to this bottom track. No, it's zooming in and out, right? You don't want that. At least I didn't want that. And I was like, why is it doing that? And you know, you can get used to it if you want to. I personally am not gonna get used to it. So um, I'm gonna actually make this one into a track. I'm gonna insert a new MIDI item. So I'm gonna pull up the MIDI editor. So if I double click in here, it'll pull up your MIDI editor, right? So this is what the MIDI editor looks like. You know, nothing to write home about. Uh, it does work for what it is. And I definitely wanna make a tutorial showing you guys how I use the MIDI editor but I'm gonna actually do a couple of MIDI editing things inside this video, so stay tuned. All right, so inside the MIDI editor, it does the same thing. So if you hit your um, mouse wheel to zoom, I mean to scroll, it'll zoom in and out. So if you actually go over here to this piano side and you scroll up and down, this is what you want. You want it to go up and down. You don't want it to zoom in and out just by moving the mouse in here. See, this is very unorthodox. When you're actually coming from another DAW, I've used Cakewalk, I've used FL Studio, Ableton, like all of them kind of have that same functionality where, you know, if you're inside the piano roll, you're using your mouse wheel, you want it to go up and down. You don't want it to go zoom in and out. Usually zoom in and out is like a key and then you use your mouse wheel. So I'm going to set that up in this video as well, show you how to do that. Another thing I didn't necessarily like about Reaper uh, when I was first using it is the record option. I hit control and R. Now you're recording, but no one wants to do that. So I didn't want it to be like that. I just want to hit R on my keyboard. If you hit R now, it just puts on your loop or your repeat. And that's not what I wanted. I didn't, I didn't want it to do that. I wanted to just record whatever I'm doing when I just hit R on the keyboard, right? So I'm going to get that set up with you guys as well. So let's get into setting everything up. All right. So before we actually start to change any of the settings inside here, what we want to do is save the configuration that it currently has right now. So if you just downloaded Reaper, uh, if you haven't done this already, I think it's highly suggested that you do it. So what you want to do is go up to your uh, options, go to your preferences. And once you're in preferences, you want to go up to general, make sure you're in general inside of preferences. And you have this option here to import a configuration or export a configuration. 
what we're gonna do right now is export just because we haven't done one yet, right? And then you can make sure you, you can select all of these over here on this right hand side to make sure everything that you changed or set up will actually go to this file. So any kind of menus, actions, any kind of RIA scripts, if you have any set up, any kind of language packs, all that will be right here. Any kind of MIDI note or CC changes or anything like that will be right in here as well. So you just hit save and it's gonna bring you to your Reaper configurations, wherever your Reaper is set up. This one is on a flash drive, like I said, really simple. So I'm just gonna say, uh, I'm gonna name this the default Reaper config, hit save. And it's gonna go through the list of all the things in here that's currently set up and save it. All right, hit okay. And now you have a configuration file set up just for your Reaper. I'm gonna hit okay on here. So now that I have that set up, I can always go back to it and go back to these default settings if I want to, if I ever wish to do that. Um, that's one of the really cool things about Reaper. You always have an option to kind of back everything up uh, in this program. Uh, and another thing I want to just point out really quick is this paths option. I would def, I would highly suggest to set this up. Just click on paths. Make sure it is store peak cache uh, for your Rhea peak files. Make sure you find a place for it. Uh, let me tell you why. So if you have like a whole bunch of different places you pull samples from, like um, your MIDI packs or um, any kind of downloaded samples, it'll create a peak file for that sample. Uh, and that peak file will go wherever you clicked <laughs> on it, unless you set this up. So make sure you set this up. Click on the store and then browse wherever file you want it to be. So all your peak files will actually go to this folder instead of being all over the place, right? Um, that's just a, a good um, gem for you guys. All right. So let's get everything set up. So first thing you wanna do is go up here to actions and you wanna to go to action, show action list, right? And here is the action list. So what I wanna do is go to mouse wheel. So this will bring up everything associated with the mouse wheel, right? So right now the mouse wheel is set on a zoom. We don't want this. We, you want to do this one, it's control alt mouse wheel. So where it says scroll vertically. So let's click on that. And we're gonna go right down here where it says uh, shortcut action, hit click on add. And all you gotta do is move your mouse wheel and boom, it sets it up and shows you this is the shortcut that is gonna create for your mouse wheel. Hit okay. It says this key is already mapped to this action. So you wanna override the mapping. This is one of the really cool things about Reaper is that they give you an option to create this DAW to fit whatever you want. You can overwrite all the actions inside here, uh, which makes it really good. I'm gonna hit okay. So now my mouse wheel actually goes up and down now. So as you see here in the background, is now it's going up and down just by moving the mouse wheel. But I do want it to uh, do a zoom. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna change this one and I'm gonna have it do alt and mouse wheel. So now, it's set up, I, hit, I hold down Alt and scroll my mouse wheel and now it has Alt mouse wheel here. I'm gonna hit okay. It's gonna tell me this key is already mapped to an action. Do I wanna override the mapping? Yes, I do. So now if I hold down Alt and use the mouse wheel, now I have my zoom in and out. You could change this to whatever key you feel comfortable with, but I'm, I'm used to this um, kind of setup from using Cakewalk a lot. And right now you set up some really important things inside here. So let's actually do this same thing for your MIDI editor. So we'll go right down here to, to section. I'm gonna go to MIDI editor. And we're gonna pretty much do the same thing for the MIDI editor. So I'm gonna go to uh, view, scroll vertical. So this one right here. So I'm gonna click on add and I'm just gonna change this to mouse wheel. And I'm gonna hit okay. It's gonna tell me it's already been mapped and I'm gonna overwrite it. And we're gonna do the same for the zoom horizontally. So I'm gonna go to add. I'm gonna hold down alt and scroll my mouse wheel. And now I have that set up on here as well. And I just hit okay. 
and I want to overwrite that. Yes, hit OK. So now, if I open up this, and I just use my scroll, I can just scroll anywhere inside here now and actually go up and down instead of just zooming in and out. So if I wanted to zoom, I hold down Alt, and I can zoom in and out inside of the piano roll now. So that's exactly what we want. Now, so I'm, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go back to my main, and I wanna change the recording. So I'm gonna type in, all right, so right here we have Control and R to record on the transport. I don't, I don't want that. I want it to just hit R on the keyboard and be able to record. So I'm gonna click on here and I'm gonna hit R on the keyboard and I'm gonna hit OK and I'm gonna change the mapping because I wanna change it to the R. So now I wanna find the repeat. So this is the transport one that we wanna do. So I'm gonna click on this transport, toggle, repeat. I'm gonna hit add and I'm gonna hit control R. So now I basically just rearrange or reset them to do the control R. Right, and I want to do the same thing for the MIDI editor. So the repeat right now is on just R. I'm going to change this. I'm going to add Control R. And what I'm going to do is remove this regular R from here. So I'm going to hit Delete, and now to remove the R. So now. I have it set up to where I can just hit R on the keyboard and it'll start recording. All right. So really, really um, simple things to kind of add uh, for it. So if I hit Control and R, now it's just gonna turn on the repeat. As you see the repeat lit up. So if I hit Control and R again, it'll take it off. Uh, it will be the same for uh, the MIDI editor. So I can hit Control and R and it'll remove the loop from here. So I've got my up and down. I have my in and out. As a normal working flow inside of Reaper, I think that's really cool. So I'll give you one more tip before I end this video. And that's uh, instead of doing like a double click to add a note, so in order to add a note inside a Reaper, usually you have to do it like a double click to actually add a note inside here. Or you can just click and drag to add a note. So um, I want to actually have it to where I, if I just click, it'll add a note instead of just moving this bar around. Let's go back to preferences. So control and P on your keyboard. So you want to go to your preferences, go to mouse modifiers, and you want to make sure you're on like the MIDI piano roll because there's a whole bunch of different options in here. Just make sure you're on the piano roll. So once you're on the piano roll, you want to go to where it says uh, left click, click on that. So now you have this default action. So whenever you left click inside the, the MIDI editor, you will actually get this deselect the notes and move to edit cursor. So I want to change that. So I'm going to double click on that. And I'm gonna go to this one that right here that says insert note, and I'm just gonna hit just insert, right? So now I'll insert a note anytime I click inside of the piano roll. So I'm gonna hit apply and okay. So now if I add it, if I just click in here, it'll add a note. So anywhere I'm clicking, I can just add a note one time. If I want to remove it, I can just double click and it'll remove that note. Double click to remove. One click to add. Right click to highlight all of them. Delete. All right. So seeing that I set this up like this, what I want to do is go into the preferences and I'm going to save this configuration. And I'm going to have this uh, downloadable for you guys as well. So let's Export this configuration. I'm gonna have all the same settings. So everything is checked over here. So everything I have inside of this current version of Reaper, you will actually have it as well. So I'm gonna hit save. All right, and I'm gonna name it Excel Default Setup 1. All right, so now all those configurations are actually set up inside of Reaper. So anytime 
you want to get these configurations, you can have it. If you want to go back to the default, you can always go back to the default settings as well. This video is showing you before you actually do the rear pack, which I do have a video showing you how to do the rear pack and the SWS files and configure uh, Reaper a little bit further. But this is a basic setup. If, like I said, if you're coming from another DAW, it's gonna throw you off because it did me. I mean, for a while I was avoiding Reaper like the plague. I was uh, not really interested in seeing anything further because I wasn't grasping uh, the power of it. The more and more I use it, the more I realize I can make this door do what I want it to do. Um, and that's one of the benefits of actually using Reaper. So I hope you guys really, really enjoyed this video. The link should be below in the description so you can download the configuration file for this setup. And like I said, it's not anything really hard. You can actually do this on your own and set it up to whatever key you wanted to. This is just the way I work and this is my workflow. Let me know in the comments, guys, if you want me to do a MIDI editing video show you how I actually use the MIDI editor, how I get it set up, uh, a couple of other things that I've added to mine to make it flow a little bit better. So if you really do wanna see that, just make sure you comment below MIDI editor in the comment section and I'll get that video set up for you guys as well. But with that being said, that's pretty much the end of this video. I wanna thank everybody for actually coming through and watching Learning Reaper. Till next time, people, peace. Hey you, yes you, YouTube wants you to watch this video next, man. Go ahead and click it. I'll wait. <laughs> nah, I'm just playing, I'm not gonna keep waiting here. All right, I will see you in the next video though. Peace.